Welcome back to Building Tomorrow's Cybersecurity Workforce, sponsored by ISACA on federalnewsradio.com and 1500 AM. I'm your host, Jason Fornicola, and my guest today is Christos Dimitriadis, ISACA's International President and Group Director of Information Security for Intralot. Christos, welcome to the program. Thank you. Thank you, Jason. The European Union and the United States are both focusing on cybersecurity as a key issue. Talk to me about some of the key similarities between how they're both approaching it. Uh, indeed, they both governments focus on uh, cybersecurity issues and uh, also on the um, improvement of the cybersecurity capability in both regions. So there are many similarities and a number of differences as well. Uh, on the similarity side, both the US and the EU uh, try to um, follow a proactive approach, especially at uh, the governmental sector but also in private companies which are dealing with critical infrastructure. Uh, they also promote uh, the creation of awareness in cybersecurity, especially for citizens. They both discuss about using common risk management methodologies uh, about um, uh, addressing uh, cyber attacks. These similarities uh, are a result of the cooperation between the two regions and uh, back in 2010, during the EU-US uh, summit in Brussels, both governments have agreed uh, to create a working group uh, that relates to um, uh, cybersecurity and also fighting cybercrime. This cooperation has been uh, strengthened even further in uh, March uh, 2014, uh, when uh, both governments and through this working group have decided to um, uh, discuss issues such as the promotion and the uh, protection of um, human rights uh, online. Uh, also the application and the applicability of the current uh, legislative framework. Uh, also about taking common action uh, against cyber threats. So uh, one reason for the similarities is that um, this is a, a, a global problem. Uh, it's not a jurisdictional issue, I mean cyber threats. Uh, the other uh, is a result of um, the other reason for these similarities is the result of um, uh, this cooperation. Now, on the different side, uh, I will say that um, uh, the U.S. government is following uh, more or less a self um, um, a self regulation approach, mm -hmm. uh, while the EU government is asking is um, working towards asking compliance, mandating compliance by companies. And this is through the um, uh, Network and, inf and Information Security Directive uh, that it's uh, still under debate and uh, which we expect um, uh, to be voted um, uh, very soon. So uh, the U.S. is uh, asking companies and um, um, uh, the market to um, um, uh, take a number of measures where more or less the EU is following an approach which is more about mandating uh, compliance. Uh, on the differences uh, side, uh, also, I would identify the um, uh, fact that implementation, it's, um, I, I believe it's a little bit more challenging in, in the EU. And this is because the US is addressing this at the federal level. Uh, the EU, through the publication of its cybersecurity strategy, is trying to do the same. But still, um, the 28 countries in Europe um, will, uh, have, uh, will have to deal this um, uh, on their own. I mean, there is guidance. Mm -hmm at an EU government level, but it's an initiative that um, each country has to take by its own. Now, now, one thing that governments are looking at as a means to fight cybersecurity uh, threats is information sharing. Can you talk to me about what's involved in that? Sure. So information sharing is about the accurate and rapid dissemination of uh, intelligence around cyber threats. It's about exchanging information between the public and private sector about um, vulnerabilities, about um, uh, cybersecurity, about cybersecurity events and incidents. Uh, and this is, um, uh, I would say, um, a fundamental principle in security because if we don't share uh, this information with uh, the community that is trying to solve the problem, uh, then we delay the resolution of the problem and. Um, uh, if I am allowed to say the bad guys will be able to find it quicker and then um, uh, we will have a, a business impact out of it. So in principle, it's a very good initiative. Um, again, the, um, uh, both the EU and the US are uh, trying to apply uh, information sharing through the creation of um, a governmental uh, network of agencies. 
Uh, in the US, those are called ISAOs, Information Sharing and Analysis Organizations. Uh, in the EU, those are called the National Competent uh, ag um, Agencies, NCAs. So, all authorities, okay, NCAs. Um, so, th the approach again is similar about information share sharing between uh, the public and private sector, uh, but um, uh, the, the problems are similar as well. So, information sharing, for example, is uh, treated a uh, with a little bit of um, uh, subs su um, um, uh, suspicion uh, as far as competition laws are concerned. So there are a number of uh, items to, to address, to tackle, but uh, I believe that in the end this would be a very good initiative. Christos, what skills are governments looking for when they're recruiting cybersecurity professionals to come and work for them? Well, this depends on um, um, uh, its job title in, in cybersecurity. So uh, again, a fundamental principle in order to be able to create a robust cybersecurity capability in a company or an organization uh, is to create the appropriate organizational structure. So you need the general like or the manager of the team and then you need uh, skilled engineers in order to, to be able to do the job. Uh, on the manager side, um, you need, um, um, let's say, chief security officers or chief information security officer who will create the policy, who will create this, the security strategy that will in turn support the business strategy. And then uh, we need the engineers and experts in cybersecurity that will deal with the identification, um, uh, the protection, and the response to security incidents. So in cybersecurity, we have preventive, um, detective, and response control. And we also need the capability after a cybersecurity event takes place to um, uh, help uh, the corporation recover. Uh, all those skills, the most important part is that all those skills must be proven in practice. And this is um, why ISACA, through uh, CS6, through its cybersecurity nexus program, uh, has created this new exam uh, where the examiner is able to get trained and also take the exam in a virtual environment in practice. So in the end, um, the result is based on, um, on the performance of the examiner and not in, in theory or uh, exams that are taken in paper. Certainly something that we could talk about for a long time, but unfortunately that is all the time that we have for today. I'd like to thank my guest, Christos Dimitriadis, ISACA's International President and Group Director of Information Security for Interlot. I'm Jason Fornicola, and you're listening to federalnewsradio.com and 1500 AM.